next question is a symbolic question means that if you become a president prime minister or you come in a power in a country where you have to do something for the women mm -hmm. so what exactly you will do uh, which you feel is not yet done in a very comprehensive way i will start with uh, khalud and then i will go to sana and then i will go to doctor and then I will go to Samantha and Asma in the last. Uh, yes. So, so um, I would say uh, the most important and the key point for the future is educating the girls and the women, especially in the developing countries or the disadvantaged ones. Because sadly, we have seen girls fighting to have an equal education opportunity. Uh, they faced violence, abuse, and even some got shot uh, in this process. So uh, educating uh, these uh, girls into educated women uh, will create um, better job opportunities for them, uh, have better earnings, and to break them out of this uh, poverty uh, cultural cycle. So they can, uh, when once they are educated in even different life streams, uh, they will be able to stand up for themselves and uh, they will have the confidence to participate uh, and even educate other girls uh, and women and empower others. So uh, they say um, like women are uh, half of the society, but I believe that women are the full society because they do raise uh, uh, generations of both genders, boys and girls. And sadly, till the moment, there are women who uh, raise uh, boys uh, to be uh, still uh, uh, like dominant and girls to be submissive. They, they give power for boys over the girls and they give more privileges to their boys than to their girls. So. Uh, this should stop, and I believe it can stop by educating these women more uh, in life. Because women, uh, educated women, has the power to change the mindset, which is the key issue. Uh, mindset of a full future generation. She can, she has the power to change if she changed uh, herself and her mindset. So, and. Um, believe I believe that this will raise healthy kids healthy uh, future generation and uh, which will make uh, families more stronger which will uh, make society more stable and to the extent it will uh, reduce the crimes reduce the abuse the racism uh, all this start from the woman from educating the woman because uh, this is where the, the key issue lies. So this is the main thing I would really, if I'm in power, I would focus on the education and educating of a woman both, because educating her in all life aspects and uh, uplifting her to, to a mindset that she believes that she's uh, equal equal and she to a man and she has the equal rights to uh, to demand uh, in her society that's great so Khalud uh, is on the point that uh, if she become a, a minister or a prime minister or a president she will work on female education so let's move to Sana and see what uh, she has in her mind uh, what I would really encourage uh, governments uh, uh, and public institutions to do is to introduce entrepreneurship incentives for women. Uh, and right now, there's a lot of focus on startups, but I think a lot of uh, uh, small businesses are being left out. So I'm talking about some of the mom and pop stores, more mom than than pop. But you know, s small businesses where women uh, want to be. Um, uh, better trained and they want more incentives. So these, the, the toolkit can, can include marketing, it includes uh, fairs for women, and it includes also, um, you know, making, make, uh, facilitating things like loans and um, um, access to government uh, contracts. Uh, some of the things that are, uh, you know, happening right now in the UAE are 
you know, a, a program called ICV or in-country value. I think it will be uh, very important to try to integrate small businesses by, in, by adding some of the incentives that the big companies uh, present within their ICV certificate as some of the collaborations that they have uh, or outsourcing opportunities they give to small businesses. So really trying to empower uh, female businesses and giving them access to money, to funding, to partnership uh, support, and also access to contracts. That's amazing. I think if you make women uh, self-leader, uh, they make their own companies, uh, they don't need to go here and there. Comet is there to help them. And as per our knowledge in Sharjah, in uh, Dubai, Abu Dhabi, we have incubation centers uh, where a woman can go. And uh, there are startup uh, funders available as well. It depends like how good your idea is. So these both options in UAE are pretty much available and moving positively to the other grounds. And I think in other countries, these things are totally not available and uh, mm -hmm. they should learn from UAE mm -hmm. on this model that they can give benefits to their women. I will move to words, Dr. Najat. Let's uh, take the same question from her. Thank you, Dr. Musa. Uh, if I were prime minister one day, um, uh, let's set our, set our sights high, uh, I would firstly ensure there are 50% of female ministers in the cabinet. Uh, so the government will have 50% female representation. That's amazing, amazing. I, that's number one. Number two, I would make mentoring a national day. So every year on one day, we have National Mentoring Day where people can connect with, can be mentored or become a mentee uh, in their domain. It becomes a national day. Thirdly, I would give uh, government funding for uh, nationally appraised and certified apprenticeships. People tend to poo-poo apprenticeships but they are really, really valuable, insightful, provide a salary for, for young people who are making their way uh, up on the career path. So I would fully fund apprenticeships. Fourthly, I would provide free childcare for 12 months of maternity leave. At the end of the 12 months, I would guarantee the job is safe. Very, very important. Very important. Uh, yeah. Uh, then I would also, as Prime Minister, make it a criminal offence for companies that do not uh, give equal pay to their female counterparts. So that would become enshrined in law. And then I think finally, uh, I would provide uh, finance for women who are becoming entrepreneurs, um, that, that need finance for, for startups. I'm actually launching uh, with a partner uh, company in the UK, uh, what's called Female Finance which provide finance uh, background and backing for women that are launching their companies or who need financial assistance um, in, the, in their sort of corporate endeavors. So these are my main go-tos if I were a leader uh, and uh, my banner statements. And these are entry level. These already should be a given for women who are in the workforce, who are looking to give back to work, who are looking for work, uh, but are impeded the double burden syndrome that are impeded by lack of uh, opportunities that are impeded by lack of equal pay that think what's the point i won't get promoted i'll never become a director uh, i won't become a board member i can't afford childcare. Uh, so all of these things i've mentioned should be an absolute prerequisite that's amazing and you know you will be surprised to know that all of the points that you mentioned 80% are already implemented in UAE. UAE uh, resident, uh, citizens, they, are, they can have a marriage loan, they can have maternity leave, maternity leave and now they are uh, started this uh, father leave also, which you call, uh, I think, yeah. maternity leave, you know. So, exactly. so th these all are already implemented. 50% of the cabinet is almost uh, female and a uh, lot of women uh, uh, working has already been deployed. CEOs are women. Um, I shared the slide in the start that uh, there are a lot of local women, 43%. They are the richest women in UAE as well. Yeah. 
So they are. Yeah, I, I, I've had the absolute privilege of working in the Prime Minister Dubai's office on on a project on women. So I uh, absolutely understand uh, fully well uh, the the strides they've made and will continue to make as leaders of, of, of championing women's causes globally. That's great. So we will move forward to Samantha for her. Uh, so Samantha, you are already a diplomat. So you are somehow very, you are a government, you know, so I should not ask Prime Minister, Prime Minister, but I'm just telling you that I'm asking that imagine hypothetically that you come in a power and uh, or you, you minister for women or use your friend. So what you want to suggest her that what she should do, which is yes. UAE has done yes. uh, as a role model. Yes. We appreciate the efforts of uh, the UAE authorities so much in everything because the respect for women, the, the places that they place women is, uh, you know, very, very appreciable. Uh, if I get the opportunity to leave my country, first of all, I would want to empower women holistically, holistically, economically, socially, culturally, in every way, so that we, once we need women to be represented in various organizations, we get the qualified women. Because some women, like we have been discussing all afternoon, once they get married, then they think that their education has ended. They think that their training and attending seminars, gaining access to knowledge has ended. No, it should continue. And how do I do this? I will initiate an affirmative action for every organization that I have a CEO, half of the organizations women should represent to be CEOs, chief executive officers of those government organizations. And my ministers, I will not even give half to women. I'm going to give 60% to women. Because why? Women are hardworking, they are, they are very, very empathic, you know, they always place themselves in the shoes of people they meet, particularly in business. They are not corrupt and they are up to the task. So when I become president, and in Ghana, we have majority of our women being farmers. Now our government has introduced the planting for food and jobs and subsidizing on agriculture and other farming implements. What I will do is that I will specifically target women to go into commercial farming and create industries for themselves. I will create the enabling environment such that they are able to get loans with very low interest from our banks in order that they will be able to develop the agriculture that they are doing in commercial farming and then to create industry so that they are able to process to process all the the products from their farms, you know, add value to it. For example, Ghana is the second producer of cocoa. Meanwhile, we produce very little cocoa and chocolate and other things. We export the, 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 the peas, you know, just raw like that. But now, my government is wants to add value to it, and this is what I'm going to work on. And I will specifically target women to do that. Because women are the food makers. Wherever you go, women are the food makers. They are able to make delicious and quality food worldwide. So that is that is where my concentration will be. That's great. I think future of the, the uh, African woman is really bright. You know. Yes, yes, yes. So, yes, yes. so Asma, like if you become a prime minister of Pakistan, so what you would like to do, which has not been done yet in Pakistan, especially this my issues that I raise, uh, work harassment, uh, uh, gender equality is a far uh, thought so far. But I'm talking about a protection of a woman on the road, on the home, getting her inheritance right, uh, right to study, right to marry by herself, uh, right to get a health education. This so, what you will do if you become a prime minister of Pakistan? Uh, actually, this is what uh, I wanted to say, and it was all about reporting for harassment, and harassment has all types. 
uh, it can happen at home, it can happen outside, it can happen in the workplace, it can happen on the street. Why it keeps going on and on is that it is never reported, it is absorbed, it is adjusted, sometimes under fear, sometimes under shame, sometimes because of family values. I think my take would be to develop some kind of a mechanism to measure mental health of people, not only women, but men as well. I don't know how I will be able to do that, but there should be a way in which at certain stage of life, mental health of a person need to be checked. That, you know, it is, it is really important to understand the, the emotional uh, background, uh, which actually brings out behaviors and actions towards others. Until that is measured, you won't be able to fix it, and you will you will only be treating the 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 you know the the causes only. So symptoms need to be identified at the correct point of time. Today, digitization has revolutionized the entire world. Social media is the biggest power. You can actually create ripples within minutes with the help with the correct use of social media. And you can actually reach out to a lot of people with a single click through social media. This social media and digitization should be employed to actually reach out to people so that they can exhibit who they are, what their skills are, what their interests are. We can, we can actually do a talent search. We can actually do a talent search through through this mechanism, rather than um, as we all see a lot of mess going on uh, media and the projection of the country, especially for our country, I talk about, there, is, there, there needs to be some kind of a social media education which is needed to tell people what to bring up. Like for example, uh, a very unfortunate incident happened in Lahore and the entire social media as well as the entire media of the world was over flooded with it. But I also came to know through my sister an incident, which was a very positive incident that also happened between strangers in which men were helping women. And these kinds of things are never projected. So it's not just that only bad things are happening in the world. There are, there are good things also happening, but they never get projection. So it's, it's, it's us also what we want to see on media and what we want to discuss. Uh, I'll, just, I'll just summarize that harassment of any kind needs to be reported and mental health of people need to be checked and actions taken to fix it in the in the in, in the in the appropriate time that would enable uh you know further mess being reduced the second thing that i would like to say is is about succession planning so in corporate world if there is a man sitting and if he is talking about, if he's thinking about succession planning for his own role, some majority of the time he would prefer a male candidate. Why he would not prefer a female candidate? I mean, that needs to be studied and, and, and seen that what are the factors which are stopping him to actually take a change and, 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 and be open towards hiring a, or having a female or a male candidate. So these are the two core points. I think that would bring eventually diversity, inclusiveness. We are not, in my opinion, we should not try to create a women-centric world. There is, there. I mean, man has to do their responsibility. Women have to do their responsibility, and it's a joint effort. There needs to be more collaboration to bring a win-win solution. Thank you. That's right.